You duck. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody. <laughs> How are we doing? All right. All right. Let's uh, just get right into it. We can start the timer in three, two, one, go. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! All right. So that's the beauty of this category, right? That you just started right yeah, away. Yeah, just get right into the file. There's no setup, no nothing. <laughs> so yeah, this is Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I'm doing a 100% category, um, but it's a little bit different than the one that you've seen previously at GDQs where um, they start the game with the advanced moves already learned. This is a category called No FFM. I'm not going to be using that glitch. So that means that I have to go talk to bottles and learn all the moves on my own. And you know what? It may be the middle of the night, but we're alive, alert, we're enthusiastic, we're having a good time. Somebody's got to take the night shift. <laughs> so let's get into it. I hope you guys enjoy the run. And uh, I'm Doc, by the way, and I'm here with a couple of my friends. You guys can introduce yourselves. I'm Songster. And I'm Connor75. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. So um, for 100%, I guess we'll go over that first. I'm not allowed to beat the game unless I have collected everything on the total screen. So that includes these empty honeycombs that I'm grabbing right now. There's musical notes, and there's jiggies, which are little puzzle pieces. So we gotta go to every level, collect everything, and then get out of there, go to the next one. Once we got everything, we can go beat the final boss, and that'll be, that'll be the end. So the area I'm in right now is called Spiral Mountain, and it's basically the tutorial stage um, where Bottles teaches you the basic moves. So we, uh, we went ahead and um, just blitzed through it because there are collectibles there. Ooh. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Beautiful <laughs> bottle skip. <laughs> exactly. So there's actually two setups uh, for bottle skips there. Like one setup that us runners that, like used to do a long time ago is where we would just backflip like behind bottles and then jump to the bridge. But for what Duck just did, there's a specific spot that he jumped where he went towards bottles and then over to the bridge, which is a little quicker than the original setup we did. Yeah, exactly. It's a little more precise because there's certain like triggers up there, uh, which will just make you fall and talk to bottles, but you kind of just navigate around them so that uh, you can skip that. Yeah, no talking to bottles. <laughs> Don't want to be his friend. Don't need his help. But actually, I will talk to him a lot more in this category. Yeah. Then we want to sort of uh, go over like the differences we might see in this run. Yeah, so we're going to start with the big difference right here in that he's not going to go into Talon Trot right away. Uh, if you've been watching a lot of Banjo-Kazooie speedruns over the last couple of years, you're probably used to runners having Talon Trot instantly when they enter Mumbo's Mountain. And that's because of the Furnace Fun Moves glitch that has been most popular for a long time now that allows you to uh, get all of the bottle's moves on a previous uh, file that you have, game over in Furnace Fun, and then start the run. And this is the point when you enter Mumbo's Mountain that you normally have all these moves. But as we see Duck doing here, uh, he's going over to a bottle's to learn the Beak Bust move. Yeah, not knowing um, all the, like, the moves that you would know for FFM also changes a bunch of the routes. Um, because usually if you would have Beak Bomb, you could just enter Freeze Easy Peak early. But since we don't have that, well, we won't be doing that. Right, we're going to go to Bubble Gloop Swamp uh, earlier than we normally would. It's actually the last stage when you do the FFM route. But in this one, we're going to be going to Bubble Gloop as our fourth stage, which is actually more of the intended way of going through the game. And um, and it's because, yeah, like like uh, Longster said, Songster, sorry, I don't know what to call you. His real name is inappropriate. I'm not allowed to use it. So uh, It's a no-no. No. It's a no-no over here. So, um, yeah, um, basically, we can't do a glitch, which lets us go to Freeze Easy Peak earlier than normal. And another thing that happens is because you learn a move in Freeze Easy Peak, that's required to 100% Gobi's Valley. And the same thing the other way, where you have to learn to move in Gobi's to 100% FP. So in this category, we actually have to revisit one of those stages. 
So you'll see that I actually will be making two visits to Freeze Easy Peak in this run. Shot. And then coming up, we'll be uh, going to Ticker's Tower and we'll be using slope abuse to basically climb Ticker's Tower, not being um, having to go turn into a termite. So we'll be saving five tokens by doing that. Yeah, typically it's kind of an interesting first stage, right? They have all these really steep slopes around the stage where you try to climb up and you fall down. So um, it's kind of leaning towards telling you, you need to do something so you can get up these slopes. And what that is is turning into this termite. Um, but we skip it because there's a way to, uh, to climb up steep slopes without being the termite, which I'm doing right now. There you go. Basically, whoa, oh, I'm saving it. The same. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> but by jumping off of these slopes and going towards the middle there, uh, Banjo isn't above the slope there, so the, the timer of uh, hovering above a slope resets. So as long as you're not directly above a slope for uh, more than a second or two, then you can get back on the slope and then jump again. And unfortunately, they, uh, they actually uh, patched that um, in a later ver uh, version of a BK cartridge, like the 1.1 cartridge. And that was like the only thing they patched. Like everywhere else in the game, like slope abuse, you can still use it, but they only patched it for Ticker's Tower. Just so that we can turn into the termite. All right, so now Duck's gonna go turn into the termite, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I do have to go into <laughs> Mumbo. But I'm not gonna wake him up just yet. We'll let him sleep in. Yeah. Um, but he does have some stuff that I need to steal from him and then get out quickly. We gotta be very <laughs> quiet. Keep sleeping. But you'll notice I still collected all the Mumbo tokens in this stage, and those little uh, skeletons that I'm picking up, they're used to pay Mumbo so that he can use his magic and transform you uh, throughout the game. So I need to collect them because I do need to transform. And there are a finite amount of them in the game. However, they're not on the total screen. So I don't need all of them. Just enough so that I can do all my transformations. Mm -hmm. And something that we um, got coming up here is um, a jiggy jig skip for collecting a Jinjo, all Jinjos. So usually you'll have to do the, you know, the jiggy dance. But here, we're going to collect the Jinjo and immediately jump into the water. So here we go. And then bam. Perfect. Flutter, skip that Jiggy Jig dance. Yeah, and it's actually really important because the 10th Jiggy does like an eight second long dance that's like a little bit longer than the normal Jiggy Jig. And that's it, that's Mumbo's Mountain. Yep. Do we have a moment for a quick donation and announcement? That's a good time. We have $3,000 from Anonymous. Yeah, All and right. uh, that $3,000 donation put us over 2K donations for the entire event. What? That's 2,000 donations total. All right. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what? It's been a hype start to this GDQ, and I'm always really grateful when they give me an opportunity to come out here. It's super fun. A lot of good people around. You know, keep giving generously and keep having a good time. I know it's in the middle of the night for a lot of people, but the real gamers are watching right now and having fun. Heck yeah. So here you'll notice that Duck did not uh, open any levels, so... Yeah, I'm going to be entering a lot of levels early in the speedrun, and there's uh, quite a few that are different that you would have not seen at a GDQ before, and I don't believe this one was actually shown off uh, when I raced against Hag in 2019, so... So to get into Treasure Trove Cove, he used a laggy camera angle there to flip out of bounds. And now uh, he's going to do a pretty precise jump here to get into this water that is still a little bit out of bounds. He can swim there and then do another precise flutter jump to any yeah. level. It. Nice. And speaking of uh, entering levels early, so this is actually the first ever GDQ run that we're going to be like representing bit clips for BK. 
which is really cool. Ugh. Oh, oh, that was yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen, too. It's, it's so often you ground pound through the floor there and then accidentally leave the stage, so I was ready for that. Yeah. But yeah, Big Clips, we showed them last year at SGDQ 2020. What was last year, too? Yeah, this is 23, okay. <laughs> and uh, we showed it for Banjo-Tooie, but they have the same engine, so we actually found a lot of uses for them in Banjo-Kazooie. And uh, I'm going to be saving two and a half minutes by using bit clips in this run. Um, they're really difficult, and they're really complicated, and they look really uh, completely wild, but you'll see what I mean when we get to that part. Yeah. Got a nice quick dive getting that gold for Blubber. He lost his gold. Can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so are we going to get good Blubber or bad Blubber today? Is Blubber going to be nice to us? Come on, Blubber. Oh, yeah. He's, He's nice good. to He's us. Good, good Blubber. Blubber is invited to the birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, what I mean is that the Jiggy's going to spawn right on my head there during the cutscene. Of course, the dance overlapping with it going to save us a little bit of time. Yep. And since we don't have Beak Bomb, usually we would have for FFM, he's just going to be going straight to the lighthouse after getting this jiggy. In the chest. In a lot of these flying sections, we have to pick up the collectibles that are barely above the ground. It can be tricky to stay in flight, so it's paying extra close attention there to grab the no and then jiggy without landing. Yeah, flying into Jiggies is really good and something we can utilize a lot in this stage because there's a lot of flying going on. And uh, if you fly or swim into a Jiggy, you skip the dance. You know, I love the dance. It's one of my favorite parts of the game. Yeah. But as a speedrunner, we want to see it as little as possible. We're anti-dancers. <laughs> And here we're going to be um, subusing this uh, fall damage to get some to low okay. health. Didn't want to get to that low health. Yeah, not that low health. It's okay. We have to dump it later. Anyway. Exactly. Do we have a moment to read some of these many, many donations? Yeah, yeah, you? get going. I'm yeah. sorry, there is really little downtime in this game. Yeah. You can go ahead right now, for sure. Yeah, we have $100 from The Ooman, who says, Good luck, Duck. Watching the first game I ever played get destroyed is what got me into speedrunning. Whoa! -hey! Whoa! -hey! <laughs> we have a $20 donation from TSR Storm. Shoutouts to Duck for getting Banjo Kazooie into SGDQ. This game is such an underrated speedrun, and it gets faster and faster by the year. Best of luck with Bit Clips. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Storm. Thank you, Storm. Stormy Warmy. Time for a few more? Oh, yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Uh, we have one here from Gruntilda, Gruntilda the Witch for $15. She says, Banjo runs with open paws, raising money for the cause. He steals the treasures from me and gives them to charity. Grunty hates when you are kind, so if you donate, I will mind. I'll be waiting up in my towers. See you there in just two hours. <laughs> Very nice. Get some applause for that one. Yeah. Time for a few more? Sure, this is a good time, yeah. <laughs> We have a $15 donation from Larry the Latipus. Hey. Says, Thank God Canary Mary isn't in this game. Oh my God. <laughs> True. Actually. Relatable. I have $30 from Sick Nasty, who says, just want to give a shout out to my buddy Duck and the rest of the Banjo community. Save Tootie and beat the hag. Can I get a whoa-hey from the audience? Hey. Oh, hey. Very, very nice. We have a $50 donation from Pebby, who says, Stayed up late just to see you again, Duck. Watch out for Bubble Gloop Slump. It's a really a uh, yucky place. <laughs> nice. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so right there, Duck just walked into a nipper and uh, did the whole fight from inside of him. Yeah, no hitbox at the front. Get in there, and, and you can skip all the phases just from, from pecking on the inside. Yeah. But where does Nipper go when you beat him? He's not in here. It was a... Uh, some... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just dark hole. <laughs> 
All right, so I'm coming up on a trick called Leaky Skip here, which uh, it's not used in FFM because we already know this uh, move I'm about to go learn from Bottles. But basically, I'm going to try to overlap two cutscenes, one where Leaky will drain the water that's uh, in the, um, like, covering the sandcastle down there, and one where I learn a move from Bottles. So basically, I can try to activate both at the same time. And I got it. He got it. Good. So I just learned to move from bottles while this thing was going on. It actually saves a lot of time. And uh, one of the cool things about doing that in NoFFM is uh, if you don't skip the text, then bottles doesn't heal you, which normally he, he helps you out and gives you some health. But I do not want health at the moment. Exactly. we got to prepare for a death warp. Another cool thing for no FFM here is um, for FFM, since we have Beak Bomb, there's uh, some faster strats that we can like just Beak Bomb through the Jinjo while also collecting the Honeycomb at the same time. But here, we don't have Beak Bomb, so we don't have to worry about those difficult, fast strats. You can just do it normally and easily. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. And I mean, like, this is one, maybe the only part of the run that's like easier. I would say no FFM, the rest of the run, uh, there's some really tough stuff you're going to see, especially if you wait and make it to the very end. I think that's where this run really shines. I'm a big fan of no FFM um, because to do the, uh, the most popular category of this game where you already have the moves learned, it requires like creating this file ahead of time where you get to the end of the game but you never learn feathers and eggs and it's very difficult to do that. And then you have to set up, it takes like five minutes to set up the, the glitch before you can do a run. So every reset takes a really long time. And I just want to throw it out there for anyone who's like maybe been interested in Banjo-Kazooie speedrunning. And just that part of it is like way too overwhelming. No FFM is really fun. I, I love this category. It's only a couple minutes slower. And uh, you can just pop the game in and play. You know, like it, it's, it's really nice for that. Yeah, definitely recommend a bit. Um, any runner that wants to learn this, it's a very good category. So coming up here, Duck will hopefully get the death warp right after picking up the jiggy and skip that. Head oh, I game. thought I was going to land. Woo, that was kind of scary. <laughs> That's good. So yeah, it skips that all important final jiggy dance and you die, taking you back to the, uh, to the exit entrance here. Yes, exactly. we're now, unfortunately, uh, we don't have a way to quickly get into Clinker's Cavern early. So I would have liter literally, I literally would have forgotten. To the I literally would have forgotten. <laughs> and yeah, because he learned um, Spring Pad, so now you can go back and learn it. Yeah, I told these guys to remind me about that. <laughs> so yeah, Clinker's Cavern is not open because I didn't have the move. So I have to go back in here, open the level. Yeah, is now a good time to maybe talk a bit about the history of FFM? Because we keep saying that acronym, but I'm not yeah. sure everyone knows what FFM is yet. Go, go on then, yeah. Yeah, so it was back in, I believe, August of 2015 when Linkus was speedrunning this game, and then he game overs in Furnace Fun in that Boombox minigame, and then he starts up a new speedrun again and gets to Mumbo's Mountain and realizes that he can't uh, learn the bottles moves. And it turns out that he already had those moves from the previous file in the new file. So with that, the glitch Furnace Fun moves was born. And uh, from that point onwards, we had a community vote. And uh, there was some mixed opinions on whether it should even be allowed because you were using uh, the, the data from a file that you've already played on, and you would have to go into Furnace Fun and game over before every single run of 100% with FFM. So uh, not everyone wanted to use it because it didn't feel legit to start with progress from another file. Yeah, as a lot of games have these little things that people argue over, like what should be allowed, what shouldn't be allowed, it was uh, definitely one of those, for sure. But then it took six years for no FFM to actually be added as a subcategory on speedrun.com. Mm -hmm. So for about two years now, uh, no FFM has been its own category, and there's been a lot more popularity for it recently. Yeah, it's kind of funny. No FFM was actually um, like a miscellaneous category for a long time. It, it was part of like a meme or board category. It was, it was crazy. But now we finally got it in the main leaderboards. 
now we're in Clanker's Cavern. So this whole level in the speedrun is just full of cycles. So as long as we don't miss a cycle, we shouldn't like lose any time. Yeah, so basically as soon as I entered this stage, every single thing I did, I mean, obviously I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but I'm trying to go, oh, darn, okay. Miss the bubble. Just trying to go extremely fast with really, really precise movement so that I would make it down here in time to get an early bubble. I missed one cycle, so I'm gonna lose a little bit of time from that, but it's, uh, it's no big deal here. There's another uh, really tough cycle to make later in the stage. So, I'll have another chance to save some time there. But this is probably a good time for donations. A lot of swimming going on right now. If you've got any donations, go Oh, for it. we have so many donations. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we have $15 from Trainer Anade, who says, let's see more Peggle, especially harder stuff like all pegs, which is a great reminder. We have a challenge open for uh, Peggle Deluxe. We're at 6,000 out of 10,000. Y'all, we can meet that so easy with the flood of donations that's coming in here. Uh, speaking of, we have $5 from King of Valinor, who says, love you and good luck, brother. Yeah, thanks, man. We have, uh, oh, we have a fun one here. $20 from Nick O, who says, BK, Banjo Bear, BK, Kazooie's there too. He's the bear we love with the dark brown fur when he scratches ya. It's gonna hurt. Kazooie's got tood and those Brigo legs, and she can carry the world and shoot some eggs. Huh, BK. Made by Rare. BK. Banjo Kazooie rules. A little iffy on the rhyme scheme, but oh, good I love job. it. You know what? That was epic. <laughs> was that, you the, you, was that you the went with what you worked with. The Mario there. movie, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely was banjo, right? It's like when Donkey Kong comes out in the Mario movie, they like made that little song. I know, right? <laughs> we have a five dollar donation from Snacker the Shark who says, "Wait, come back! You forgot a secret jiggy in the water." Also, did anyone else see a naked hermit crab running around? <laughs> Time for a couple more. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. We have $5 from Ginjonator. Gonna donate $5 every time Duck res rescues a Jinjo and the crowd goes, Wee! Can we do it, folks? Let's get jiggy with it. Wee! 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 We have $25 from Charmander. Hey, Duck, it's always a blast seeing you run on GDQs. I stayed up extra late tonight to see you run live. I've always loved Banjo and Kazooie, and watching someone destroy it inspired me to try my hand at it, too. Not very good at it, but oh well. Anyways, keep being awesome, and don't forget to sing the Mr. Vile song. Here's the first try MMM early, and I'll donate an extra $5 for every failed attempt. Good luck on the run. Oh, so I should just fail MMM early over and over again. <laughs> we can I'm, be here all night. I'm not saying it's an infinite money exploit, but it sounds like one. <laughs> oh, man. Time for a few more? Sure. $50 from I Am Gibbon says, Eat come Eat come I guess we do have a trick coming up here. Oh yeah, go for it. We got the bolt jump. So what he's gonna do now is he's gonna like come here, get this note right here, and he's gonna make this jump all the way over there instead of having to climb it over there. And bam, he got it. Whew, thought I was gonna let go there. Yeah, that beak bust gives you a little bit of extra height to grab onto the pole. Yeah, and this is also essential to make the cycle here. Because if you miss that bowl jump, then, yeah. Could be missing out. And another trick comes Whee! Basically, he does a backflip there, like, but he bear, he bear claws first and does a backflip. So he basically backflips in the air and gets that honeycomb midair, which is really cool. Yeah, shout out to Alpha for the tutorial on that. That made it super easy for <laughs> even runners like me to learn the trick. Well. Oh, this is gonna be really close. Oh, almost. So that's a really, really tight cycle. I probably could have made it, but I didn't. I didn't want to like accidentally fall earlier and stuff. Whoop! Here I go. Yeah. All right. Those alcove, those little alcoves could be really, really tricky, like because one slip up, but this wastes a ton of time because you have to swim back, and yeah. That's the tough thing about Clanker's Cavern speedrunning is, you want that early cycle for the tooth to enter Clanker in the first place, and you want the early cycle for the bolt, and both of them are super, super hard. 
Yeah, that's why I say Clankers is just full of cycles. It's insane. Except when you're like in like Clankers. Luckily, no major time loss for either either of those. Yeah. Here you're gonna grab the jiggy in flight. But then we actually have a Watch this. super, super dangerous <laughs> room right here. Yeah. Because these blades. This took me the longest room. to learn by far. Yeah, and, and he's gonna do this without gold feathers. Insane. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, okay, okay. you can talk about it. <laughs> Super hard. <laughs> and go back to. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Invincible. I'm, I'm cracked. That's all you can say. <laughs> I know that's actually very lenient. And if you just run along <laughs> that approximate spot, you'll never get hit. Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. All right, ready, everybody? Whee! Whee! You guys are incredible. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're coming at the end of Clinkers. So now we're going to be uh, visiting the mutant snippets. What we're going to try to do here is we're going to basically kill two of them. And then the last two, we're going to poop like eggs on them. And then while those eggs are killing them, we basically position ourselves where the Jiggy is going to spawn, therefore like saving that time from going to the Jiggy and this already being there. Could be a little tricky sometimes, though, because the mutant mm -hmm. snippet doesn't always want to be where we want it to be. Do we have time for a donation while we're killing the Teenage Mutant Ninja snippets? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. We have $250 from Bonnie, who says, Roo! that sound that Kazooie makes while jumping, specifically written out that way. We have $10 from Prometheus, who says, Ikum Bokum. Also, let's even out that loom incentive. <laughs> Time for another? Yeah, you can do one more. All righty. I have $25 from Kona Rican, who says, I just saw a bear, a bear wearing a bird in a backpack be chased by a mole wearing some thick glasses, a hippo wearing a pirate hat, a camel, and a witch doctor pass by. They all dropped $5, so I figured I'd donate it here. <laughs> nice one. So here we're coming up to the end of Clanker's Cavern, and you'll notice through this run there's a lot of uh, death warping at the end of a stage. And usually I'm going to be getting my health really low and then finding a way to die, but this stage... There's a unique, you know, more a unique one where we're, we're actually going to run out of air. And um, so there's a perfect convenient swim here that I have to do where I get all the notes, that empty honeycomb, and the very last jiggy in the stage while swimming. So it's a little bit tight on the timer, but it's, it all lines up really well so that right here when I get this very last item, uh, we'll drown and we'll have 100% of the stage right before doing that. So. One thing we didn't mention yet about this game that makes it really not marathon friendly at all and uh, extremely unforgiving is that if you die at any point during a stage, you lose all of the notes that you collected. So they respawn in the stage and you've only got 56 or whatever you died with and you have to go back and recollect every single note. So basically an unintended death during the speedrun can lose up to like 11 minutes or something, like more even sometimes. Yeah. And depending where you die. You definitely haven't factored that into the estimate. So, no. So if you die, you're going over estimate. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. no, but it's fine. I won't die. I hope. Um, anyways, yeah, so any unintended death would be a really, really big time loss. Um, but the intended deaths are okay because once you have the 100 notes, you have them for good. Yeah. I guess they fixed that when they uh, switched B uh, Banjo into Xbox because the notes actually saved. <laughs> so, Fixed is a strong word. They made it easy <laughs> for the whiny babies. That is true. <laughs> Complaining a lot. <laughs> but everyone just loves the Xbox version with, with that change. It's everyone's <laughs> favorite version of the game, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, this is a great time for donations, honestly. We're just, we're just going to the next stage, so... That's absolutely perfect, because I have a $25 donation here from Blues McGroove, who says, first time donor and first time being in the live crowd. Got to donate during one of my favorite games. Good luck, duck, and get your free on. Free, free. 
we have a $25 donation from P.S. You Love Me, who says, good luck, duck. Bree! Bree! We have a $5 donation from Ghost Pants, who says, first time watching GDQ Live. Glad to be watching the Banjo-Kazooie run. Good luck, duck. We have a $50 donation from The True Ginger Ninja, who says, I recently had the opportunity to meet Duck in person on a chance meeting at work. He's one of the coolest people I've ever met. I'm so happy I get to support him from the crowd at my very first in-person GDQ. Yeah. You got this. Woo. Thank you. That's been happening to us so much more lately, where we just run into people like at our jobs who know what speedrunning is. Yeah, and love games done quick. You know what it yeah. did to my ego when I met this guy, and he was like, "Yeah, I like watching speedrunning." And I was like, "You ever watch that games done quick they do like twice a year?" And he's like, "Wait a minute, are you, I think I know who you are." <laughs> you know, it's, it's really good. Yeah, so shout out to all good of our the coworkers ego. there. <laughs> So I'm actually going to be changing the route a little bit just to be somewhat marathon safe. Uh, normally, this is the one move in the run you actually don't have to learn. Um, but I'm going to learn it because I need to have a little extra health at the end just in case I lose the Vile minigame. Because in No FFM, we actually have to do Vile without the speed shoes, which is really difficult. If you've played this game, you know when you were playing it, you had to go learn those speed shoes before you could beat Vile. And, uh, you know, we have our ways of like trying to get ahead of him without the speed shoes, but it is pretty whee! it is pretty difficult. So playing it a little safe. I'm learning the waiting boots so that I can have a little more health at the end uh, for Vile. In case I lose, I can try again instead of dying. And I believe the intended way is like they want you to learn running shoes and then go back to Vile to get that jiggy. Yeah. But we're like yeah, no way. We're just going to do it. <laughs> we don't need running shoes. So interestingly enough, like, Vile is one of the most nerve-wracking parts of this run <laughs> because uh, of how tight it is without speed shoes. But I am going to be singing my cheerful little Vile song. You know, I, someone already asked for it in the donations, so I might as well. There's one cycle that like that's coming up now is the um, blue crocus cycle. If you're quick enough, you could just make that like um, quick cycle, like where he just opens his mouth and you shoot an egg in there. Super tough to make. Yeah, it's a little different because I learned the the rubber boots. So yeah, it's, it's always going to be a bit of a different cycle. Here we're gonna kill all these flibbits with gold feathers. Oh. Have you ever tried doing this without gold feathers? It's tough. It's it hard. It's extremely difficult. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Good. Cutscene overlap. Yep. I totally <laughs> meant to do that. Exactly. Here coming up, we got hut jumps. Oh, yeah. So usually um, you have to break these huts to like, you know, spring pad and go over, but you can just straight up just jump over to the next platform from there. Except this one, this one's really tough. <laughs> yeah, that one's like pixel perfect, so you do actually have to break that one, but the other ones you can just jump up off the hut itself. We have time for a few quick donations. Sure. We have $20 from Zashiel, who says, long time runner, first time donating. One thing to say, go hook. Go hook. We have $10 from a Welsh whale, who says, best of luck to Duck. Where are the other 74 Connors? And Songster, you know what to do. <laughs> Welsh whale, Welsh whale, Welsh whale. <laughs> <laughs> We have $100 from Greater Knighton, who says, Duck running Banjo-Kazooie was my first experience with speedrunning back in 2016. Super excited to see this run. Good luck with Rusty Bucket Bay. Thank you, Greater Knighton. You guys are superstars. <laughs> Legend. Good for a couple more? 
Yeah, sure. We have $15 from Lord Liauer, who says, I just beat 100% of Banjo-Kazooie for the first time since I was six a few days ago, and then I learned it was in GDQ. Salubrious coincidence. What a good word. Perfect so, timing. I've never heard that word. <laughs> if it's made up, it's well made. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sounds must, like a good word. Must be in the dictionary right now. If it isn't. All right, so I'm getting my phone out here just to pull up Notepad. I promise I'm not like bored of the run or anything because we have a really difficult memory game coming up. And normally in runs, like I would just type the colors of the turtles like in the Twitch chat as they come up. But I don't think Duck has a keyboard over there. Yeah. <laughs> so what Connor's I'm, trying to yeah. say is we're going to cheat. <laughs> yeah. So we're <laughs> making this co-op, and I'm going to keep track of the colors Cheater. for him. But yeah, remembering all seven is really tough. Because, yeah. But I think you got round one fine, right? <laughs> and round, I should have round one and round two just oh. So what he just did there was basically like run into um, tipped up, so we can like basically walk oh during the cutscene. Seriously, <laughs> oh my God. this game is broken. <laughs> that's a that turtle's buff. All right, you got him. <laughs> nice. So I'm really just focused right now. <laughs> All right, blue, purple, yellow. <laughs> yeah. Then pink, yellow. Okay. Oh my god, this is such a like, this is no stress. Then blue, light blue. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. They have the, those turtles yeah. have the worst hitbox, because if you hit their dead zone, it's just like... A, I mean, you saw like, what happened on the red yeah. turtle. I hit it like three times, and it didn't work. <laughs> he was not willing to go down. Yeah, it is way harder to remember seven colors in a row like that when you <laughs> aren't keeping track. I don't know. Does anyone do that from memory? Nobody actually, does. Actually, Nobody does. I tried doing that when I first started running, and then I think I was watching, and then it was just difficult. I was surprised I was able to do it, but it was hard. But when I started watching people, I started them, like texting the colors and stuff, and I'm like, I need to do that. Oh. <laughs> I'll make my life so much easier. Right, we're going through the maze. We got waiting boots so we can just walk right through this maze. Yeah, normally you would just jump through this uh, swamp, and by the time you get to the very end of it, you have exactly one HP left, so you can go do the vial mini game and then death warp after it. But I want to play it safe, just in case I lose the vial, I would get another chance by getting in there with three HP. Yeah, that's totally understandable because vial without running shoes. Definitely, definitely really hard. I'm sure you casual runners know. <laughs> Those of you who've tried without running shoes. Do I have four health there? Um, uh, or three. If I have four, I want to get hit again, honestly. Yeah. I won't risk it. If we don't know for sure, I'll just keep the health there. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at So, okay, hello. Oh my gosh, he was, re he was ready. <laughs> at least I didn't get hit. Um, I was talking about like how you know everybody who runs this game types the turtles. It got me thinking. It reminded me of something I really wanted to mention, which was you know, a lot of people just watch the GDQs. They leave it at that. But if you actually watch this and you think you want to try it, there's a huge community of people who can help you. There's tutorials. There's everything. If you just go to speedrun.com and you go to like Banjo, you can find like the Discord and, and join the community. There's tons of people in there. If you're interested in any Banjo game, even Nuts and Bolts, which is terrible. 
Um, you can join the Discord, and, and there will always be people there to talk to you and, and help you learn the game. So, you know, there's lots of ways you can stay connected. I mean, you can watch my stream, twitch.tv slash duck. I'm always speedrunning Banjo-Kazooie, having a good time. You can follow Schlongster7 and Connor75, my guys here. But anyways, vile song time. Here we go. Here we go, we're racing Mr. Vile. Greedy crocodile doesn't make me smile. On round one, we'll grab all of these items. We don't gotta fight him, he's real slow. That's right, on round one with Mr. Vile. Greedy crocodile doesn't make me smile. Going around to eat up all the yumblies. Yumblies in my tumbly, hey, let's go. Greedy crocodile, Mr. Flippin' Vile doesn't make me smile. Here we go, we're gonna eat up all the yumblies. Yumblies in the tumbly do da da do but da da do da day that's right he's vile the crocodile he's a greedy croc sucks rocks don't make me smile all right now that time is running out mr vile is gonna lose no doubt cuz i'm the better faster crocodile and he's stupid slow mr vile yeah All right, so this is uh, three minutes of basically auto-scroller. We can't save or gain any time here, so feel free to read off donations during the rest of this. Oh my gosh, and if that song wasn't worth donations, y'all, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, speaking of donating, uh, it's GDQ, duh. Um, our save versus leave the shepherds, both categories are 801. Uh, dollars away. Guys, we can close that gap. Come save on. Save him. Save him. Save him. <laughs> uh, we have $10 from Leisure Function, who says, donating for Banjo-Kazooie. I introduced BK to my son last summer, and it was just as fun for both of us as it was for me back in the day. We still sometimes greet each other with a, wah hey That's adorable. We have $20 from West Dog. Met Duck and Connor75 at GDQ last year. Glad to see them both make a return this year. And on stage with one of the best speedruns to watch. Can I get an ikumbokum from the crowd? Ikumbokum. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> Time for a few more. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another minute. We have $10 from Pogo Fish. Banjo Kazooie is pretty influential to me in the things I want to make, and GDQ is an all round fantastic event. So, perfect time to donate. Good luck, runners. We have a $20 donation from Finn the Fox. Donating in memory of my mom, TJ, whose favorite game was Banjo Kazooie. Bree! We have $10 from Tolkien. Long time watcher, first time donator. Thank you to everyone working for GDQ for the week's worth of entertainment, and good luck to Duck on the run. Thank you. So this is the, the hard round of Vial here, where he just is moving really fast. And without the speed shoes, it can be difficult to keep up. But Duck seems to have a healthy five-point lead here. Come on. Oh. All right. He's good. Right. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, man. <laughs> First try. I will, I will not lie to you. Like I've had, I've come up with like really solid safety strats and whatever I could do to make this not be a total train wreck because it's a super hard run, super unforgiving, and any unintended death would just like be a total train wreck. Um, I had no idea what to do if I lost the vial. No idea what to do. I brought in extra health so I could have tried again, but if I lost again, I have no idea. It's like a like twenty a, minute. Yeah. Time. <laughs> So, that is a huge relief. Whee! Whee! Yeah, Bubble Gloop is like probably like the second longest level in the um, in the whole speed run. So, yeah. and Vile is at the end. So if you lose the if you die to Vile, I did have four health. That's a huge time loss. <laughs> Come here. So this is this is like part of the time losses. I'm usually supposed to have one health here, but played it safe, so I got to get hit a few extra times. Can you kill me? Is it that hard? Yeah. The one time we want you to kill us. <laughs> All right, and that's Bubble Loop Swamp. Another good time for donations. We're just heading to the next stage. 
Excellent, excellent. We have a $15 donation from Wolf, who says, Always hype for Banjo-Kazooie, and another fantastic Mr. Vile song from Duck. Thank you. We have $25 from Isquen, who says, Wahey, from the night crowd. It's always great to see a Banjo-Kazooie 100% run, a relic of a simpler time where Canary Mary didn't exist. <laughs> Good luck, Duck, on the rest of the run. We have $15 from Fairy Baby, who says, I'm so, so excited to see my favorite game back at GDQ. Good luck to the runner. Hype! 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 We have a $10 donation from Daft Digger, who says, Ikam Bokam. Hey, hey that's the thing I said. I just had this idea. I had this thought of a call to action because we're all talking about how it's the middle of the night. But this has to be like prime Europe hours, right? Prime Australia hours. Shout outs to anyone who's watching where it is not the middle of the night right now. Represent your, represent your country. You know, $5 donation train saying where you're watching from. So now we're in Freeze Easy Peak 1. We'll be coming back here like later in the run for our second visit. But for this first visit, we're just going to be collecting most of the jiggies and collecting all of the notes so that we don't have to worry about that for our second visit. Yeah, the reason we have to do two visits is because we don't know the speed shoes, which you can see in Bubble Gloop. And to get all the jiggies in this stage, you do need to know the speed shoes. So we will have to come back. Um, so yeah, you're going to see me leave behind a couple of jiggies, all the Jinjos and you'll see how I get them on our second visit. And as you can see right now, Duck only killed one of the enemies there, and the others don't actually load onto the screen when you aren't looking at them. So he can just chill here and uh, collect all 10 of the little Twinklies by doing absolutely nothing. Bam, we didn't even have to do any work. Oh, saves a bunch of time, too. It's like the most downtime in the whole run. Like, I can breathe there, briefly. And I gotta say, like, just love the music in the stage. I mean, I love the music in this game in general. Shoutouts to Grant Kirkhope, of course. Wrote an amazing soundtrack for this game. Love I know he's watching right now, too. <laughs> Heck yeah. And there we are. We got Beak Bomb. Yeah, we learned Beak Bomb so I can do this. So that right there was called Yellow Star. So basically, you like casually, you're supposed to just fly through that like around three times. But with that beak bomb, we basically roll into it, like through it once, flutter back, and then there's like a dead zone right next to the star where you can just beak bust and recoil back a third time. Saving yeah. a lot of time. And the game just puts you back in flight because it doesn't know how you would have gone through the star without being in flight. So I can use that to my advantage and, and go hit the buttons before I actually go into the tree. Probably one of my favorite tricks, honestly. Yeah, a really cool looking trick. Swag strats. You gotta have them. Swag. Is there any point in speedrunning if you're not trying to look cool all the time? Speaking of looking cool, can we read some donations from, from, from some cool people? Yes. We have $10 from Soul Willen, who seems to be answering that call for to action. They say, hello from Australia. Watching a Kazooie speedrun while I'm playing Tui? Good day, in my opinion. We have $5 from Nin, who says, watching from Germany. Fantastic train idea. Big heart. We have $5 from Mr. Y, watching at 10 a.m. from Germany. We have $10 from Code Alpha. These keep on coming in. I'm watching from the U.S. because hey, I you're chose to you're welcome, <laughs> Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> watching from the U.S. because I chose to stay up for this run. Keep it up. We have five dollars from Mott. Hello from Europe. This makes for a nice morning cartoon. We have twenty-five dollars from Anonymous, who says, "Had to donate for Banjo Kazooie Vial Song. Great start to a great event." We have five dollars from French Fry Apocalypse, who says, "Three ten a.m. here in Wisconsin. Any third shifters?" <laughs> Time for some more. We got a lot. <laughs> yeah, really, it's a good time. Yeah. We have $5 from Tango Crime. Watching from Manchester, England. Been enjoying GDQ since 2011, and it's great to see the runners and crowd enjoying the vibe. Love you folks. Have a great marathon. $5 from JVK. Loving the banjo run. Greetings from the Netherlands. 
We have $25 from Nyasara. Watching some sweet bear and bird action from sunny Singapore. SGDQ hype. Hype. We have $5 from Banana Nana Nana Boy. 10 a.m. here in Slovenia. And watching games done quick oh. makes my terrible job a lot better. <laughs> we have $5 from Four Eyes. Banjo $5 train. Watching from Finland while working. We have $5 from Banjo. Love watching SGDQ from Germany. Good luck to all runners. We know where Freeze Easy Peak is now, guys. Yep. It's been Germany this whole time. I knew it. <laughs> we have $5 from Krista. Greetings from Finland. It's lunchtime here. Also, cha 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 cha. Okay. $5 from MH0. $5 donation train. You got it. Greetings from Germany. Ah, the classic. Time for more? Uh, yeah, go for it, man. I mean, of course. That's you what it's all about. You're on a roll here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wanted. Hey, I don't need to talk about the game. This is great. Get a break. Donations. $5 from Rokmal Serala. Jumping onto the train from Na Night Gang. Greetings from Germany. Ikum Bokum. $5 from Rotzi1988. Greetings from Germany. Heart. We have $50 from Ram Heartbird. Wahey! Yeah, that's the new that's the new one. Okay, everyone who already just donated, you have to donate again. <laughs> Another $5. And the message just has to be Wahey. That's it. Nothing else. We have $5. So, everybody do it again. <laughs> again, again, come on. We have $5 from Sneaky Dryad. Five dollar dues from 6 p.m. Australia crew. <laughs> We have $5 from Pablo's. Hi, longtime watcher and donator here, representing Finland in the $5 train. Keep being awesome, GQ. It's a little past 11 a.m. here. We have $5 from Matt. Banjo Kazooie gave me a, a love not just for platformers, but for adventure games as well. Best of luck with the run, duck. Hello from Australia, smiley face. We have $10 from Monster Locket. Feels wonderful to see Duck and Banjo again. Thanks for the so far great run. Greetings from a sunny noon in Sweden. We have $5 from Mr. Kapoli. Finland here. Clock is 11 a.m. $50 from Swanzor. Watching from Belgium. 10 a.m. here. We love Banjo here. $5 from Kona Rican. Greetings from Nebraska, representing the night shift. Oh, yeah. $5 from Remio. Love from Oss. All right. So we are now the walrus as you can see. And um, we have to race Boggy the bear, the guy we helped out earlier with his stomach ache. Um, so we're going to be racing him, and he's going to be having a great time. There's an ex he's going to exclaim a great time he's having by saying, Wahey! And uh, while he's doing that, the entire time I'm racing him, I want the chat to just spam as hard as they can with Wahey's all the way until the race is over. Here we go. And everybody in the audience, go for it. Whoa! Hey. Whoa! Hey. Whoa! Hey. Whoa! Hey. We got the awesome leg strats. <laughs> man, this is so much power for one man. I can just tell people to do anything like that. <laughs> You love your power, Doc. Uh, <laughs> now tell everyone to run banjo. <laughs> yeah, speed run the game. So if you can hear anything above the Lahays, uh Duck actually did leave behind a lot of collectibles throughout this level, and he's using this time during the race to pick up everything else to get to 100 notes. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can you can get during this race, just a good use of time when you have to go through the whole stage like this anyways. Honestly, it works hand in hand with Boggy too, because this whole race is just rubber banding. So if you're really, really ahead of Boggy, he's it's on his Ferrari and books it, man. But if you're like, if you're if you're um like Dang. a little behind it, he yeah he goes slow for you. Oh, I'm gonna lose! I'm gonna lose! I'm gonna lose! Just kidding. Ooh, <laughs> got me scared for a second. <laughs> oh. Power of the Wahey saves you. Yeah, and uh, Wahey. The Wahey. <laughs> That was incredible, everyone. <laughs> Good job. Don't worry, we'll be doing it again, but not until the very end of the run. So stay tuned. So unfortunately, quite a big time loss here. I missed one of the notes during the race, and I have to backtrack a little bit. As the slow 
Walrus. Walrus. Should there get it sled. is. All right, time for something you've never seen before. If you've uh, if you've watched only the, the games done quick banjo runs, this is a uh, bit clips coming up. The first bit clip, which is going to allow me to enter Mad Monster Mansion without actually going to the puzzle and opening the stage the normal way. The puzzle for this stage is really really far away from the actual stage, so for a very 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 long time. Banjo runners were trying to figure out a way that we could enter this stage without opening it. And it finally happened, and of course it's nearly impossible and incredibly difficult and incredibly ridiculous to see. They make no sense. But uh, here we go. It's, it's time for Mad Monster Mansion Early. Uh, the debut of a new trick saves a minute and a half. Yeah, and to put it... <laughs> To put it into perspective how precise this trick is, there is a single spot in front of Mad Monster, Man Mad Monster Mansion that Duck has to get into that is one one hundred thousandth of a unit wide. And that is so precise that there, you, you, you can't just like walk up to the spot with any sort of visual cue. So every single input that he is doing in this next section is he has to be holding very uh, perfectly straight on the joystick, and then do other series of actions to get into that spot. But uh, before we start that segment, uh, he does just have to go break down this gate on the left side of the area here, because when we leave the level as the pumpkin later on, the pumpkin fortunately does not have the power to break this gate, but uh, he can do a really cool uh, sequence of movements here to use the top of the hitbox of the gate that is still there and then void out here to take him back to the start of this area <laughs> where now he is going to uh, start the MM early setup. So this first part is just walking straight forward then he's going to try to get a pause here. So that pause stops his uh, movement to get him into the spot. And unfortunately, he got late frame because there's there's two setups, and um, if you get late frame, it loses about 10 seconds, optimally compared to the early frame. But now he's doing uh, a series of what we call the twirly whirlies, where he is spinning uh, the camera over and over and pausing to try to get it to freeze in a certain location. And all this is doing is rotating banjo so that he's facing the correct direction so that when he does other movements here shortly, uh, we'll be facing the exact direction that he needs to be. And uh, these, these twirls are pretty precise, so he's just going back and forth with the pauses until he gets the correct one. And Ooh. First try. Sorry about whoever was going to donate a bunch of times if I failed it, but <laughs> that feels pretty good to show that off and get it first try. It's Oh man! Yeah, so, so it wasn't fast, <laughs> but it worked. It, 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 it was still it did the job. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, the floor there is actually made up of a series of triangles, and there, with, with certain triangles where they meet, uh, there is a very precise spot where if Banjo is standing in, uh, the game doesn't recognize him as uh, top of either of the triangles. So for a single frame. You can actually pass through the ground there, uh, in what is called a bit clip. And through through normal gameplay, that's really never going to happen to you because you do need to have. Whee! Whee! Has it been that long? Yeah, I feel like I, I stopped doing that. <laughs> but yeah, but if you have some a lot of downward momentum, then you can clip through that spot, which is why he used that beak bust there to get into the level. Bear and bird breaking physics. Love to see it. Do we have time for some donations? Yes. <laughs> we have more than made up for what we might have lost by missing that clip, by the way. Did everybody uh, say Wahey? I just want you to just go off and just say Wahey, like no real message. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Asking you shall receive $5 from French Fry Apocalypse. Wahey! $5 from Code Alpha. Wahey! $5 from The Human. Wahey! $5 from Remy Jet. Wahey! $5 from ROTC 19, 1988. Wahey! 
$5 from Mok Masarala. Wahey! $25 from Kanban Miao. Wahey! To the power of two! <laughs> we have $5 from Render. Wahey! We have $5 from Four Eyes. I don't know how to spell! Wahey! For $25 from Geika. Wahey! <laughs> We have fifty dollars from Steve. Wahey, 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 wahey. This is music to my ears. Count it on my fingers because I'm a speedrunner and can't count. Fifty dollars from Gravity Pike. Wahey. Ten dollars from. I'm running out of breath. Twenty-five dollars from Murby. Wahey is from wahey, wahey. Twenty-five dollars from Big People School. Wahoo! I think that might be the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> we have five dollars from Lon Lon. Greetings. Much love from Brazil. 5 a.m. here, a great marathon to all. Wahey! I think that's all of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have time for some non wahes Sure. All right. We have $50 from Parad, who says, that singing made my heart dance. We have $10 from Chaos ML. Great job taking down that Mr. Vile. Your song made me smile. You're the be your best crocodile. We have $5 from Vivi, who says, Choo Choo from Finland. We have, oh, I missed one. We have five days, five days, $5 from Prometheus. Wahey! Greetings from, you know where this is going, Germany. My brain is going to be wahays at the end of this night. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to be seeing Boggy in my sleep. <laughs> we have $5 from P Vigil 21 Had to donate during the train to say wahey! And good luck to my longtime friend in Bromingo Duck. Hey, thank you, P Vigil. We have $5 from Cello Viorta. Hello from Japan. Love 100% collectathons, and this one's a classic. Oh, yeah. We have $10 from D-Rich. Staying up late in Canada to be blown away that someone can beat Banjo-Kazooie in two hours when it took eight-year-old me almost two years to beat. Roo, 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 roo. Oh yeah, Canada. Let's go. <laughs> Fellow Canadian. Oh. We have $25 from Anonymous. Duck here, making the game look so freeze-easy. Heart from Oz. We have $5 from Zerbit, who says, Wahey! We have $10 from Neowolf, instructions are unclear. $5 times two for Wahey from Australia. But also, good luck, Duck. Watching, loved watching your BK run since seeing you in the 2019 race. You're awesome, mate. Heart. I have $10 from Anonymous, taking advantage of the British bank holiday to watch GDQ. Let's get them pegs, Wahey! We have $50 from King Ka. Getting jiggy with it. All right, so coming up here, uh, we actually don't have the speed shoes yet because you learn those in Gobi's Valley. So in order to enter the church, uh, Duck is going to have to cheat a little bit and not do this quite as intended. Hey, it's not my fault that they made it super easy to do this without the speed shoes. All you have to do is pause, like... I'll just do it like three times to be safe, but you don't even need to do it three times. And then the timer just stalls out so you can make it all the way in there without even using the running shoes. Way too fast. <laughs> then coming up over here is uh, Motsan's organ. So. Casually, you're just supposed to just copy Motsan and whatever he pushes for the keys on there. But if you know all the keys by heart, you could just go and do them all in a row and save a bunch of time from Motsan being slow and hitting all the keys. Just like this. Time for a couple of donations while we're pounding those keys. Yep. <laughs> Just as I've caught my breath, we have $15 from Wahey that says Wahey. We have $5 from Hoogruzan that says Wahey has lost all meaning now. I, I'm right there with you. Did it have meaning? I, 
have <laughs> $5 from Thody who says, Wahey! From Vienna, Austria. We have uh, $30 from Afternoon Fika. Hi there. We are Marcus, Ida, and Caro from Afternoon Fika here in Sweden. We're watching your stream while we pack plushies from our online shop. Thank you so much for the entertainment and good luck. Heart. We have $5 from Musso for Hire. Thanks for shouting out the Aussies watching this in prime time. And thanks for shouting out Grant Kirkhope, without whom Mr. Vile would never have a song. And thanks for playing an awesome game. Greetings from Sydney, Australia. We have $10 from Charmander coming back. Good job, Duck. You got it first try. I'll give you an extra 10 just because color me impressed. Bet you can't try first try CCW. Whoa! Probably not. Well, we'll see. CCW early is a little bit harder. We have $5 from Random Fox. Warm hello from Germany. It's a public holiday over here, so perfect time to watch SGDQ. Time for a few more. Mm -hmm. We have $5 from Mel Sinten. Greetings from Sweden. We have $10 from Nathan. Greetings from Australia, where I just enjoyed my dinner and I'm watching this great Banjo-Kazooie run in the comfort of the evening. Does mean I have to wake up at 2.30 a.m. to watch the opening. Well, we give and take. $5 from Ame Freak. Good morning from Sweden. I know my dad is watching. I used to watch him play this when I was a kid. Love you, SA. We have $25 from Nice, who says, Thank you. <laughs> for this awesome run of my first game ever played. $5 from Retropone. Donation Train from France, currently at work, but won't stop me from watching some banjos and kazoos. We have $10 from Juske, who says, I used to make hate fan art of Boggy because I was so bad at the racing game. Love to see him lose. Whoa-hey! We have $5 from Downside Up. $5 for my favorite Jimi Hendrix song, Purple Wahays. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Last time. But you all have to donate another $5. <laughs> I want to know what your favorite transformation is in Banjo-Kazooie. Mine is the pumpkin. I, I was just going to like say, the it's definitely the pumpkin. <laughs> you know, it's all about the crocodile, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I like the pumpkin, and I like the walrus, I think, the most. You know, and there's some great ones in Banjo-Tooie as well. Oh yeah, like the T-Rex. That one's awesome. Time for a few more donations. Mm -hmm. $10 from Menace Inc. Watching from London, UK with my five-year-old love in the Banjo-Kazooie run. I got this game with my N64 and remember being proud of 100%ing it in under four hours as a kid long before I knew what speedrunning was. Love the soundtrack by Grant. That's really good. <laughs> you beat it in under four hours as a kid. It's pretty nice. First time I tried to beat this game in one sitting, it took me eight hours. So. Oh, I never beat this game as a kid. <laughs> we have five dollars from Just a Goose. Wahays from Germany. Heart. We have five dollars from Calliope. A five dollar international hype train. I'll buy a ticket. Hello from Berlin, Germany, where it's 10 a.m. and a public holiday. So here's to a whole lazy day of enjoying GDQ. Good luck to all the runners, and a salute to the tech crew and MSF, the true heroes. We have five dollars from Anonymous. Working and watching Duck Running is one of the greatest. <laughs> watching Duck Running, one of the greatest games in the world. Count me in. A way from Germany. All right, so we got to give a shout out to Connor75 <laughs> on this. I just remembered this. We, um, we used to do this well as Banjo and Kazooie, which is definitely not the intended way. You're supposed to come in through this little hole, and it's very easy to just walk around and collect all the notes in here. Um, but we thought it was faster to come in as Banjo Kazooie and swim around and do it. But Connor never wanted to do that because it was hard. Yeah, it was. It, it, it is incredibly difficult to swim around these thorns as BK and get the notes. So I made my own route and did this as the pumpkin. Right, and, and then, we were all like making fun of him. Yeah, was just, you yeah. know, yeah, trying I, to I, save strats, not saving <laughs> saving time. I still have screenshots of people making fun of me for this. <laughs> but then, but no, but wait, this is, we don't need to get that into it. You know? <laughs> I got proof. <laughs> but but one day, you know, I, I decided to like time it, and I, I did rough timings compared to the world record, and I was like, wait, this is actually maybe faster. So then uh, the, the the real good runners actually went and timed it and realized that yeah, this doing the well as the pumpkin is actually faster, 
and then the route for Mad Monster Mansion was changed after that. Yep, thanks to Connor75. <laughs> Big round of applause here for Connor, come on. You know, this isn't a very good run. I think we should just call it. <laughs> Start over. Reset. Yeah. See ya. No, just <laughs> <laughs> Reset's all part of the run. Um, we don't want to take the time to de-transform back into Banjo and Kazooie and go all the way back to the start of the lair to get the Clanker's Cavern jiggy. And uh, it's, it's just a lot of backtracking time loss. So actually resetting the game, going back into your file, which takes you back to the beginning of the, of the lair, is uh, it's just actually faster to do this. So. Are there still donations? I know we've read so many, but yeah, right. <laughs> we have more donations? even more. Even yeah. more. This is probably a good <laughs> oh, time more, because oh, baby. getting into Gobi's Valley, there's a lot to talk about, so get as many as you can get done now. Oh, yeah. Great. We have $10 from Purple Rupees. It says, my favorite transformation is that cute jumping orange. <laughs> <laughs> we have $5 from Prometheus, who says, best transformation in Banjo-Kazooie. That's obviously the washing machine. <laughs> We have five dollars from Rock Malsarala. Crocodile is where it is. Why? <laughs> Crocodile. We have ten dollars from Kona Rican, who says, "So that witch doctor came back, but he's being chased by a washing machine with a backpack that looks familiar." We have ten dollars from Ria, who says, "Washing machine is best transformation." We have five dollars from Mott, who says, "Got to be the washing machine transformation." Mm. Should have seen that coming. We have five dollars <laughs> from Trainer Twelve Thirty Two, who says, "My favorite transformation." Probably got to be the washing machine. <laughs> okay, here's, I got another call to action. <laughs> so, in this game, there's a 1 in 40 chance that Mumbo Jumbo accidentally turns you into a washing machine. Now, I think there's only one transformation left, right? Is it just the B? So, if he turns me into a washing machine, 1 in 40 chance, everybody's got to donate $40. <laughs> it's got to be done. So a new, brand new strat here by Duck, picking up that note before going in the sand. And now yeah, I thought of that <laughs> while I was napping today. Because I was like, wait, that might make it easier to do this trick. Because this is a very tough section of Gobi's Valley where uh, you lose health very quickly in the sand. But he's going to try to clip into the Sphinx here with only three health left. Got one more try. Yeah, I don't know. This is it. It's OK. It's not the end of the world. I yeah. felt like I did it okay. I'm not really sure what I did wrong, but you know, it's one of those things where you're not doing what you're supposed to do, so. Yeah, and yeah. unfortunately you only get two attempts before you would have just died there, so you have to come up and open it as normal. Yeah, yeah but if Duck didn't do that cool uh, rolling strap for the first no, you would have only had one try. Saves a little bit. Yeah, I could, basically I was just trying to clip into this without opening it the normal way, but doesn't take too much longer to open it the normal way. Whee! Time for a few more. Yeah, you could probably fit some in. Great. Uh, we have $10 from Jason Valentine. Morning from Sweden. My brother got this game when we were young. I managed to beat it way later, but one of my favorites on the N64. I have to go with the pumpkin, but the croc is cool too. Wahey, oh, pokem. Uh, or something. We got a $5 from Anonymous. Wahey, from Washington State. Big fan of the walrus transformation. Okay, so coming up here. Um, there's these rings that you're supposed to fly through in the stage, but you're actually not going to see me fly through any of them except for one. If I have the, them off camera, they don't actually spawn. So I can get to where they spawn as they're rising out of the ground, and then I can rise up with them and then just jump through the ring. It saves quite a bit of time for me to do all that flying. And you're going to see me do that with, like I said, all of them except for one. <laughs> cool. It's that one nice. So we're about to do um, a mini game sort of inside this uh, pyramid coming up, which is like a memory match game. However, it's the same every time you play the game. So I already know where everything is. So you don't need me to pull up the notepad again? No, no, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> that would be shocking if I, if I needed help with this one. Yeah. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get the best possible 
remaining timer. And, and that's how we always, in speedrunning, we're always like, okay, there's a timer counting down. How fast can I get this? The best time you can get on this is a 69. So that's what we're going for here. Good to fit in some of these many, many donations while we're doing this puzzle. Mm -hmm. We have $10 from Queen of Spoons. Whoa, hey, from Australia. It's my toddler's third GDQ. She hasn't missed one yet and loves dancing to the game music. I think I know what word what we'll be teaching her next. Whoa, hey. We have $25 from Kaboom Pow. Pumpkins, washing machines. Oh, I'm still holding out for the T-Rex transformation Mumbo keeps teasing. Cheers, duck, and the couch. We have $40 from Crawl Lion, who says, here comes the German washing machine. That one was ominous. We have $5 from Four Eyes. I've never even played this game. I know of it and seen it a bunch, but I don't know the transformations. My favorite is when he transforms into a wahe. I'm just enjoying the run, guys. We have $5 from Backside of Water. Best transformation has to be the washing machine. I got the reference in that name. Don't worry. <laughs> we so this is the ring that I fly through. And then um, there's actually a little bit of a difference here in the NoFFM route because there is a move we have to learn, which is kind of the whole, the whole difference about this run is having to go learn these moves. So actually the fastest way to learn this one is to smash into this wall and then land right next to the molehill while this timer is ticking down. Bottles gives you your health back, and uh, you still have plenty of time to run all the way over to the store before the timer runs out. You say plenty of time. That was two seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a long two seconds. And uh, coming up, I'm going to explain it before I do it because it's one of the harder things in the run. I mean, Gobi's in general is, is quite a tricky level. But uh, I'm going to be trying to do a really perfect flying section into a uh, clip through the wall into the water pyramid. So if I can get this, it's, it's a pretty nice time save. But first, we got to go through a ring. Again, waiting to turn the camera so that I can actually go on top while it spawns. And uh, yeah, this section's really going to be, I'm going to need to focus a little bit. Flight there, tricky. Yeah, he gets it. In. So, <sighs> so that part, that whole section is really like tough because to actually like commit to the water period, I mean, you actually have to get that jiggy in flight, or or and if because if you don't, then you won't be in flight and beak bomb to the like part where you have to beak bomb through water pyramid. So it just loses a bunch of time. I think 20 to 30 seconds to be exact. Yeah, well, different ways of failing. It can lose different amounts of time, but that was the optimal way to do that trick. Well, the, the hardest part is that even beak bombing into the rock that Gobi's chained into, you can't just beak bomb into it and stay in flight. Depending on where you hit the rock, you can land, you can grab the jiggy, and all sorts of bad things can happen. And so there's like one very precise spot where you can um, beak bomb that rock and stay in flight. So that that's the whole the whole thing relies on getting that. So I'm pretty happy that worked out. It's a really cool trick, cool looking trick. So I'm glad I got to show it off. And coming up uh, here is the is the maze pyramid. So casually you just have to go through this pyramid, like try and find your way. But we're simply uh, just gonna skip the whole thing. Yeah. No mazes. I know people at home who played this game, never seen a speedrunner, are like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I died like five times in that maze. <laughs> no, you can just jump over it. I was one of those people. <laughs> Whee! 
And if you notice, we did actually didn't uh, hit the witch switch there because um, we can actually get that later in the run without having to open the... Yeah, the you might have noticed that like we are... There's, um, in every stage, there is a grunty switch where her face is on it and you should just ground pound it and a, a jiggy will be obtainable within the overworld. But uh, there's plenty of overworld jiggies we're going to completely ignore until the very end of the run. And uh, we're going to let you wait and see how that works, because it's very cool, so... Okay, that could have been way worse. If I mess that up once, I mess it up like 15 times. Yeah, that, that's a tricky jump <laughs> without a setup. Yeah. So with Duck nice. just sit there, um, so usually you'll if he hits you normally, it does like a damage. But if it like hits the ground and then you jump on it, you lose a bunch of health. Which yeah, is and it's no one really knows how it works either. You can lose like three. I think you can lose all the way up to six. So I actually got very lucky there. I, I jumped on that enemy and for unknown reasons, he dealt four damage to me, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, so it sets up the death warp perfectly at the end here. And then uh, here for Grabba, you're usually supposed to get this Jiggy with the running shoes, but we're just gonna beat bomb to it. And then beat bomb to the running shoes. Yeah, and now since Duck uh, beat bombed into the water pyramid earlier, uh, I still have to go through and clean up the rest of these notes around the top of the water pyramid. And then uh, go and pick up the all the remaining notes in level, all before these running shoes expire. Do we have a moment for a couple more donations? Um, yeah, that was good for a couple more. Absolutely. We have $5 from Downside Up, who says, paying dues for my membership on the Wahes and Memes Committee. And while you're paying a your membership for both of those committees, uh, let's all pay our membership for the Peggle Committee and get that Peggle in incentive met. Oh man, I just gotta say, other than failing Gobi Clip at the beginning, that Gobi's was really sick. That felt yes. really good. Very clean. Man, that's a tough stage. It's so nice to actually like, yeah, play through it like that. Yeah, because good. any individual mistake in that level usually results in you landing in the sand, taking damage, and then before you know it, you're at one health. And then things get really scary. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I think it's it's kind of the nature of the speed run. We need to figure out the fastest way to have the least amount of health possible by the end of the stage. But also, if we die, we're 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 screwed, and we the whole run is over. So we just play the whole stage with no health, expecting that we're not going to die. It's, it's, I don't know. All right. Good time for donations. Just heading to the next stage. 100%. We have $5 from Chromavision. Greetings from a fellow Canadian. I'm spending my birthday staying up late to watch my favorite speedrunner play my favorite game. Fingers crossed for the washing machine. Woohoo! I have $10 from Envenomed. I remember laying down on a rugged floor watching my friend's older brother play this game at his house as a young kid. The game got my mind racing into the world of gaming. Good luck to the runners and thank you everyone for the donations. Remember, be kind and save the animals. Ha! Ha! Ho! We have $25 from Bony Cat. Enjoying the night shift with my partner, showing him my favorite in childhood game being run by an amazing runner. My favorite transformation is the croc. Heart. Good luck on the run. We have $5 from Lordly Hour. Best transformation in BK? The secret cheat washing machine transformation you get for beating bottle secret puzzles. Wishy washy banjo lives in my heart. All right, so Rusty Bucket Bay. Um, this is basically where the game casually takes kind of a big spike in difficulty. A lot of people have memories of this being a very difficult level, way harder than the other ones. There's a lot of ways you can die very easily, and, and uh, the most infamous, of course, being the engine room, which 
is like the only place in the game where you, there's a hole that leads to instant death, basically. Instead of just dealing damage. Well, I'm getting my, uh, but my keister rocked right now, so I gotta focus for a second. Okay. I mean, like you were saying, this is where the difficulty spikes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is really hard. You know what? I'm gonna get that health, actually. I just need to know where to go. Okay. But yeah, coming up the engine room, uh, this is still where, like, my runs die on a daily basis <laughs> to falling in here. Oh, yeah. It's incredibly difficult to do everything correctly because there's just so much that can go wrong. You can fall off a random pipe, get hit by the fans. There's numerous ways. Yeah, this is probably, like, the number one run killer ever in the speed run. But um, casually, you're actually supposed to slow these fans down um, with the buttons on the other side of this window and engine room. But using um, a little damage um, invincibility, we can actually go through these fans uh, quite easily. Take a damage, and then, like with that invincibility, quick invincibility, we go through. Okay, so I'm, low yeah. on health. <laughs> <laughs> so at least he was hit back onto the pipe there and not down into the, the instant death. And here we're going to do the same thing here. Nice. Oh, man. I got to figure out what to do about my health situation. Just but, uh, I'll figure something out. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to kill, I'm gonna kill all the... Uh, Oh, that was, oh, that was cool. <laughs> that was, that was that. It, it, We're just going through walls. Heck yeah. Nice honeycomb box by the um, purple ginger. You know what? That honey hive is appetizing right now. Oh, yeah. Get over here. <laughs> So this whole time, there has been a timer ticking down for, <laughs> for the fan blades. And uh, he still has 20 seconds left, thanks to that amazingly fast window clip. So we shouldn't have any troubles here. Getting the jiggy before the fan starts spinning again. And you got all that health and still. So mm, still yeah, I went out of my way to get You have a lot of time. Still a bunch of time on the clock, yeah. The little slope abuse that he just used there. Usually you'll have to um, just like shoot eight eggs on that tall hole to actually make a bridge appear. But using slope abuse, you just go right past that. Yeah, I can't think of the last time I actually saw someone pay the toll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, for sure. Just listen to that music. Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple things here. Usually, when you enter Boombox, you, you once you get close to him, there's a whole big cutscene, and Boombox just un like encloses into that jiggy. So you have to like fight the whole thing with Boombox. By, like, his yeah. little hidden boxes. There's, he, he is one of those kind of boxes where, or bosses where if you defeat him, he splits into two, and then they each split into two, so there's like a lot of phases. And uh, if you just shoot eggs at him before walking into like the, the cutscene trigger, then the cutscene won't play, and the Jiggy will just be there, and you can grab it without fighting the boss. Now, if I had touched it pixel perfectly, uh, or frame perfectly, I would have been able to get the Jiggy without doing the dance, but I was one, exactly one frame early, which is no big deal. Yeah. But it's a, it's a nice little time save if you can get it. Solid attempt, though. Whee! Thank you. 
Time for a couple more donations. Yeah, go for it. Alrighty. We have $25 from They the Ames. I remember playing this kid this game as a kid when and I was terrified of the witch. Her laugh scared me so bad that I would run to the console to turn it off before her laugh could play on exiting the game. We have $50 from B Caudel95. Shout out to a great game, great community, and great GDQ representatives. Duck is the first speedrunner I ever watched. Connor is the first runner I met IRL. And Songster, well, I'm sure he's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey! hey Thank you, B Caudel. Thank you, B Caudel. Legend. We have $10 from Music5. Hello from, well, right here actually. My older brother found Wishy Washy Banjo on his own when I was a kid without the internet. I was watching and we were both absolutely losing our minds that a secret like that was in the game. Because of that, I can't not call it my favorite transformation in the game. Wahey! Wahey! So I just did this, um, it kind of it kind of just happened so quick, but it was uh, there's a, like, a very, very precise jump you can do off of a lifeboat to save like three seconds. And if you fail it, you lose like 45. But it's one of those things, you, you have to save the time. You, you have to do it, even if it, uh, even if it could kill your run. And it's really, really uh, quite a precise one, but it's got to be done. Time for some more donations. Yep. We have $25 from Kibitz, who says, Wahey! Good luck, duck. We have a $100 donation from Anonymous. No comment, but we very much appreciate your generosity. We have a $50 donation from Mr. Little 5 Loving the run. Haven't seen a speedrun of Banjo-Kazooie before. Seen so many things done well that my younger self struggled with. Looking forward to seeing Click Clock Woods. I never found two music notes in there, but now I can see them. Also, favorite transformation? The washing machine. Washing. Any fans of the, the money van in banjo -Tui? Like, I feel like the money van doesn't get enough love. It's... <laughs> eh. Nah, we don't, we don't, we don't care about money van. <laughs> Does make me play the mini games for free though. That's pretty sick. We have just a few more donations here if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, still got time. We have $25 from Thody. Well, hey, had to donate again for my favorite N64 games. Shout outs to one of the best video game composers, Grant Kirkhope. Go Duck and Wahey! We have $15 from Blue Bolt. Always love tuning into SGDQ, beaten only by a donation train. Watching the awesome Duck playing a personal favorite banjo kazooie from Scotland. Trying to focus on work that just got much harder. All the best Rare for the damage run. boost there. Uh, there's only one, I think, that we even do, but you have to get out of Talent Trot normally and do a backflip to get up to the top of that box. Um, but if you jump off and hit, get hit off that guy on purpose, you can actually stay in Talent Trot, which is a good time save, not having to get in and out of it. Yeah, at least from a viewer's perspective, it is so nerve-wracking watching this part with only two health. <laughs> yeah. Because if you're hit by a single enemy there, those trompas do two damage. They deal two damage, yeah. I just yeah. have to trust that I'm not going to get hit. I have 100 notes now, so it's not as bad. Oh, We're good. So it really is nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it. I had a bit of a heart attack there, honestly. <laughs> but I was trying to be cool about it, but... I was just like, please don't. <laughs> cool trick coming up here is um, another Jiggy Jig uh, skip for the Jinjo. So we're basically going to collect this Jinjo and then get off the buoy. And then afterwards, when the buoy's on those lowest points, we just do a big jump. And we just skip that Jiggy Jig dance right there. Yeah, it's like assumes you're still in the water if you get that Jiggy without ever touching land first. So you have to grab it in the air. Yeah, definitely. And, a cool it's a cool one. But yeah, this level, 
really cranks up the difficulty if you just think about it. Like, all of the Jinjos are each in different corners of the stage, and all of them are, like, really hard to get. Like, as hard to get as a Jiggy would be at the beginning of the game. And then you have to do all this just for one empty honeycomb piece. Like, they, they really crank it up here, make you do more and more. Oh, I forgot I had two health. Oh, well. <laughs> that's, enough. that's one way to do it. Yeah. Game was kind enough to put that guy there on the boat. <laughs> all right, RBB is done. And now it's time for Click Clockwood Early. So similar to Mad Monster Mansion Early, the name of the game is to enter the stage without actually going to the puzzle and opening it normally. Um, it's another, another um, stage where the puzzle is actually quite far from the stage itself. So it does save time, even though the trick is really difficult and precise. And I got to show it off, because that's what we do here. And also, CCW just caused 15 jiggies to uh, like open, so we save a lot like jiggies from doing that. So you have to collect it though; it's 100%. So here we got leaf jump. Beautiful. Nice. And then after he hits the switch, the the setup starts. So yeah, similar to um, M early, like you said, we're gonna start this off doing that and then doing a beak barge. And usually there's a grub in there, like trying to hurt him, but luckily he just didn't feel like being there today. Nice, very nice of him. That's setup A. So for M early, there was two setups, but for CCW early, there's three setups that we all that we have to remember if we're gonna be doing CCW early. Yeah, because it's difficult to get the, the pause on the exact same frame every time. So depending on where you, you get the pause there, you have to do a completely different setup here, learn new visual cues. Yeah, it's, and it's a lot to remember. Punch cancels there. And if you miss a twirly, it's not the end of the world, but you just kind of like got to look the other way and then pause and then do it again, basically, if you miss it. Yes! You got it! <laughs> Whoa! First, first try, which is really... That's huge. better than... That was one of the better Click Clock What Earlys I've done, actually. That was... Oof. It's definitely a big stress reliever when that, you that is, out of the way. Yeah, that huge, the feeling of relief to get that is so huge. Just like both tricks for both big clips first try. And failing those does lose a lot of time. So, and then of course, if you fail it once, you're gonna just keep failing it because it's gonna get in your head. So yeah, and good like, to get that out of the, the way. The setup takes so much time to get into that spot because the position is so precise. Uh, the people have made scripts to optimize, like, what, what is the fastest uh, sequence of movements you can do to get into that spot. And everything he did there was... had to be absolutely perfect in order to be in that uh, one one hundred thousandth of a unit uh, of a spot to be able to clip into the level. Yeah. And uh, if I recall, I think there was a donator who said if I got Click Clock what early, he would donate again, so... There you go. Done deal. And also, um, something like, it's crazy, like, there's so much things that can go wrong, but also, if that, if that Grublin were to mess up, um, Duck's, like, position there, he would have to actually, like, get one of the enemies to kill it, or to kill him, and have to restart. But, yeah. once you die, though, it spawns you right where you were starting the setup, which is neat. Yeah, that little bit of RNG can be annoying. If the enemy's in your way, there is nothing you can do. And uh, you have to just restart the whole trick. And every time you restart, it does take quite a while. Yeah. But yeah, here we are in Click Clock Wood. This is the last stage in the game. But as I said earlier, I will be making another visit to Freeze Easy Peak. Um, this is a very cool stage. It has a really awesome uh, like a gimmick where there's four seasons, and the things you do in early seasons affect things that happen in the future. So. I'm planting a flower right now, and the flower will now be there in summer, but it'll need water. And I hatched a bird, like that bird's gonna need food in the later season, so really just creative idea for a level, and I think it goes a long way. And we're just gonna clip through the ground there. Yeah. 
Boom. Almost feeling like DK64 with all these clips. <laughs> yeah. Just want to put this out there. Uh, Winter's my favorite season in this game. Pretty awesome. Yeah, each of these seasons have uh, their own cool little tricks and movements. Um, and uh, winter is, is pretty stressful and difficult, so it is fun. Yeah. But it is, it's one of the harder parts of the speedrun. But they all, they all have unique, really fun parts to them. I'd say this is a fun level to learn to speedrun, but also extremely frustrating and difficult. Are you saying that falling off of the, the tree <laughs> is frustrating? Not that I'm trying to dissuade anyone from learning the speedrun. Honestly, it is actually a really easy speedrun to learn. Just to get to a really high level is very, very difficult um, and, yeah, unforgiving and stuff. But, like, to pick up and play this game as a speedrun, it really is pretty easy to learn, I think. And so, yeah, for you know, sure. highly recommend it. Like I said earlier, in case there's new people here, like, go to speedrun.com, look up Banjo, join the Discord. Everybody's there to help. If, if you really want to learn to speedrun this game, if you have any interest at all, then uh, you could do that. And if, if you just want to watch it more, you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash duck. Because I'm always speedrunning Banjo-Kazooie. And follow anyone who speedruns Banjo-Kazooie. There's always people on. It's always, always something you can watch. You don't have to limit it just to GDQ. And then another thing with speedrunning this game, I feel like I hear a lot of times about people say like, oh, I, I learned to speedrun this game, but then it ruined it casually for me. Oh, yeah. And uh, like, you know, speedrunning the game ruined it for me. But with this game, I find it more rewarding to like, once you learn how to climb the, the tree and click lock wood, do all these jumps, I feel like it makes it a better experience. And like, it, it's very rewarding to go through the levels quickly. Yeah, I agree. Especially it's because this game, like, sure, it, it is chock full of, of glitches. I mean, there, there's a lot of big glitchy time saves and stuff. But at the end of the day, a lot of this is just being very fast at playing the game normally. And I think that's why it's not like, it's not a childhood ruiner. For if this really is your favorite game, like it's my favorite game, as a kid, I played it so many times, there was nothing new to do. And then now as an adult, like I've been speedrunning this for like 11 years, and it just, it never gets stale, because you're always trying to do better and better. New things are always coming out. So yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I agree too. It just feels so good, because I remember back in the day, me and my brother would actually race a lot, and then we'd be like, you beat Click Clock Wood in under an hour, and I would just I would just beat it just under an hour, and now it just feels good to beat it around 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, wow, that's, I shaved 40 minutes. So, a little precise jump here. Uh, there's options of getting this jiggy in other seasons because there's no floor here, but we'll get it in summer because it just so happens to be the fastest season to get it. I think they're kind of hinting that, like, you don't have to do it here. Do it in another season, but the notes are right here, so we have to go there anyways. And that, that enemy just doesn't have a hitbox, so you can land on it not get hurt. All right, you want to read off some donations? It's been a while. I absolutely do. Let's go. We have $100 from the soup store. It says, working all night shift at the Wahey store. Hello? I thought you were the <laughs> soup store. We have $5 from Amazing Shake, who says, good luck to Duck, and a special shout out to Songster, who's the only person I've ever met who's died to King Dodongo in Ocarina oh of Time. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you died to Dodongo? How did you uh, manage yeah. that? <laughs> I, to, uh, to be fair, I had a quarter heart entering the dongo, and I just happened to just get, get hit by lava. It was over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he died to lava, not the dongo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> we have a $25 donation from Flamadus, who says, Some trivia for Banjo-Tooie. There's a very, very rare chance of all the targets in Saucer of Peril to be blue. There's only a handful of clips of it happening. Yeah, I think... I've only ever known of that happening twice in history. Is this, has, have you guys heard of it happening more than that? The, the uh, saucer of peril targets turning blue, that is a yeah, phenomenon. It has a super rare chance of happening in the game's code, I think, is like an Easter egg. But yeah, I, it's probably only a couple of times that have been captured on video. Yeah. We have a $10 donation from Jonas, who says, hello everyone, great event. I'm always looking forward to the next event. Good luck to every speedrunner who's participating. Greeting from Germany. Smile. Hello. 
So um, this has actually been recently changed within the last year. There's been a bit clip found for Autumn, which has completely changed the route for this season. So um, this is the first time we're really showing this off at a GDQ. But yeah, it kind of mimics the task. So I guess we've gotten to that point, haven't we? Where it's just like, just do the task. Just do the task. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool because I think this uh, has like a big clip at the very end. It's yeah. actually my it's my favorite one because it's just it just feels like the baby big clip, you know? Like, yeah, anyone can figure this one out <laughs> and look really cool. It's it's awesome. And I think this route saves about five seconds from its old route. Ah. Pretty nice. Too. This is the hardest room in the game. I stand by it. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Let's see. To do this room properly, is so finicky. Oh. Yep. <laughs> hardest room. Hardest room in the game, honestly. I just have to get those two. Look, like, like it's impossible. It is an impossible room. But you did leave the jiggy there to pick. I up did. The yes. Winter. Yeah. It's one of those um, optional to get in any season. Uh, Jiggies, and it makes a lot of sense for me to get it there because I was there, I was right beside it, but there's an opportunity to get it while flying, uh, which as you know is going to save us from doing that jiggy jig. So we're going to try to do that. I think now would be a good time for donations. Yeah. Excellent. We have $25 from... Uh, Chromavision. This is my favorite speedrunner, wanting my one of my favorite games on my birthday. It's my lucky day. Best of luck on the run duck. Uh, best of luck on the run duck. It's getting early. Uh, happy to be donating to Doctors Without Borders. They go the extra mile, and that makes me smile. Unlike Mr. Vile. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. We have $25 from P Vigil 21. Had to donate for one of my longtime friends and one of the first runners I ever knew, Duck, running in GDQ again. Stoked for you, bro, Mingo, and a big wah hey to my wife for getting her first physician job as well. Congratulations. We have $10 from Mario. Happy to see everyone live and back in action. Love to donate while seeing the best game of my childhood. Okay, so there are six acorns we need to collect in this area because there's Squirrel, uh, Nabnut, he lost them, and he doesn't want to go find them himself, so we have to get them for him. Um, and, uh, yeah, there, we've come up with a lot of different strategies over the days on the best way to get these. So, you get them pretty quickly if you do something like this. And then this one. And there we go. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying to do those jumps. <laughs> you don't want to fall out of the tree. Um, at least a 40 second time loss, especially that high up, maybe more. But uh, it's one of those things where it looks scarier than it is. It's got lots of good setups. I remember as a casual player, I just did not know how to get that acorn in the middle of the ring. <laughs> I was like, how do you yeah. get that? <laughs> not to mention these acorns have, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not blaming anyone and this is a fantastic game. Everyone knows that. But what is wrong with those acorns? They do not have proper hitboxes. You can't, you have to go in like the very center pixel to pick up those acorns. Duck using some oh. slope abuse there. To... I think he fell there. Uh oh. <gasps> he fell? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we feed Eerie for the last time here. And then we will see a fully grown, beautiful eagle in winter. We raise this baby well. <laughs> Maybe some more donations, because we're about to pick up the pace. <laughs> yeah, true. Is... Absolutely. We have $5 from Charmander back at it again. OK, Duck, I don't want to say I'm the reason you got MMM and CWW <laughs> early first try, but I will say I did have a hand in it. Here, have an extra five, just because he killed it so far. Is no one going to talk about the T-Rex transformation? Shame. It's the best. 
we have $20 from Scrub. No comment, but we very much appreciate your uh, generosity. We have $50 from Crimson Decoded. Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie consumed so much of my childhood free time, getting the inevitable 100% completion. Seeing it completely and utterly destroyed in less than half of a gaming session's time is both amazing and frustrating. All right, so here comes a pretty easy bit clip. I need to be able to hear it. All right, so you just have to do five of those punch cancels. And then you can ground pound through the floor. You death warp, but I did not lose all my notes, so don't worry about that. If you die in an out-of-bounds void, for some reason, you actually do get to keep all your notes. So Now on to winter, which, yeah, there's a lot, in, a lot going on here. You know what? I might just... I might just clam up and focus. You guys can talk about anything you want to. Anything. Well, anything. <laughs> I mean, run it by the GDQ staff first. I, I, I don't know what you're, what you're getting at, but. <laughs> so the, the cool part about Winter is that they put all these flight pads around the level now. So that makes it super easy to get around. And we can abuse a lot of the flight mechanics, like beak bombs, to quickly get to places around the level. So right there, use the flight pad, get up and get those notes on the shed, and then hit this grunty switch. And then instead of climbing up the tree again, can fly up and beak bomb into the one of the highest rooms up here. And sometimes that guy could be like right at the edge, so if you are like pecking into it while big bombing, you can act, you might accidentally hit him and then fall off, which is definitely heartbreaking because you're most likely to die and then have to do the whole level again. But luckily that didn't happen. It's nice. And then after he gets these notes on the branches, another somewhat difficult flying section coming up here where he has to grab the, nin the Jinjo on top of Mumbo's skull. Whee! And then fly into uh, Eerie here and uh, grab the Jiggy without uh, landing. One more beak bomb to again pick up a jiggy before landing to skip the jiggy jig. And then he's going to do this gold feather dive. And ideally would have broken the window there, but still got in just fine. Nice backup save. Thank you. No, no, this is the hardest room in the, in the level, I'd say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next, we're going to be going through Winter Clip. So. Basically, we fly, and we basically get in a position where we tilt up a little bit, and then we beak bomb downwards, like this. Oh, uh, okay. Ooh. Um, way over here. That's okay. Oh. Nice. We got honeycomb and the jiggy. And we got Winter Clip, too. Okay. Yeah, that is a difficult sequence. <sighs> beak bombs. And the next coming up is a trick called Soft Lock, which um, when it is being done, we just recommend um, everybody to just quiet down just because this trick um, involves the runner having to hear how many times he jumps. Yeah, it's just that um, for this specific trick, the, uh, the screen freezes in one place because I'm going to be activating a glitch. So I'm going to be 100% playing only on sound. So for just this part, I really would prefer it if you would be quiet, audience. I would appreciate that. And uh, after that, we can get hype again. So here we go.
Yes. And he gets it first try. <laughs> okay, you can cheer now. You can clap. <sighs> So what just happened there? No washing machine. <laughs> no washing oh machine. well. <laughs> Darn. What happened there was basically since we're coming to a second visit and basically pooping eggs into the like the plant there, it goes into a soft lock where it just shows the screen, and if if we like we're able to move because we take damage from the bee, and if we didn't take damage to the bee, we couldn't move at all. But basically, since it's um, stuck in that camera, we have. Um, set movements setups that makes us go to um, Mumbo. And here we go. You know, that trick was cool and all, but we're about to have a lot of fun. This is my favorite thing about the no FFM run. So the FFM run, as you know, has this reverse B adventure as well, but it's different in no FFM. Um, so, first of all, the, every time you take a transformation out of a stage, Mumbo's not going to let you get very far. You can usually use it in the lobby of the stage you're at because there's, you have to get a jiggy. <gasps> okay. Do you know the I reset or what? Boom? Reset, yeah. You know the... Reset now. Because the door has to come back. Do, do, do you know the other out of bounds? No. Oh. The is it in the. Brentilda out of bounds. Brentilda out of bounds. Yeah. Okay, I'm resetting. What do you think? Or is it in the it, corner? Is it, in the corner. it is it the one in the corner? Yeah. I'm gonna try it. I'm you can try it. Okay. I've never done this before. Here we go. <laughs> it's here, right? Yeah, it's here. How do you do it? Just like, basically, you get stuck in the camera, and yeah. then, and then you'll keep uh, flying up, and then like you, and then like you'll just keep it like that and let go. Like go. And then he'll stop. The bee will stop and fall, but you can't fall. Yeah, he'll fall, and then you will tilt down a little bit so you can clip right beside Brinzel. Okay, I have no idea how to do this. Okay, so. I can reset and the door will come back, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you almost fell there. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, you just reset and it'll come back. Okay. So there's going to be quite a bit of time loss, but <laughs> there is a way to salvage this. So don't worry about it. I have to go back to Click Clock Wood and turn to the B. That note door has to be there in order to clip out of bounds and start doing the reverse B adventure. Yeah. But this is uh, quite the. Uh, situation we have here. Okay, but I think it's easy enough to fix, right? Yeah. yeah, you just have to go back and get the B, which leaves plenty of time for donations. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is great. <laughs> yeah. You heard the people. Send in your donations. <laughs> we have $5 from Winter who says, Fredo is your favorite season. Can we get a $5 train <laughs> with your favorite season? We have $5 from Sorty who says, my favorite transformation is turning Kazooie into a dragon. Such an awesome secret in Banjo-Tooie. We have five dollars from Windless, who says, "Seeing that box skip, uh, that box boss skip, only proves that I've had great expectations for this run. Keep nailing it, Duck." We have twenty dollars from Ninpalk. Hey, Duck, good luck with the run, and I mean that as literally as possible because Furnace Fun is coming up. Have fun. That's right, it is coming up. We have eighteen dollars from Candy Ragnet, who says, "Forgot to say, whoa, hey." Y'all, I don't know if anybody else has checked the Bid Wars recently. Uh, the uh, Save and Leave the Shepherds has been slowly uh, widening the gap. Save the Shepherds is in front by about $800 right now. It is not an insurmountable gap, and I really want to see this tied. Uh, we also have our Peggle Deluxe All Pegs final level. That is less than $2,500 away. Uh, we still have time to make that. Uh, it is gonna be really cool. We have $20 from Vlakados. Good morning from across the pond. Click Clockwood is closed. Oh my oh. god. Okay. okay. Just gotta do Click Clockwood early again, I guess. Okay. Good morning from across the pond in Northern Ireland. Good luck to the runs coming up and GQ to the runs that have already passed. SGDQ is always. Oh, that's time. right. I mean, you could, I don't you think could, I can. I open. won't go back to the switch. You could open CCW. Could you just open it. Yeah, you might have to open it. I have to open it. Oh yeah. man. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Who would have thought that have that would be it. such a thing? I just have to open CCW because there's no way for me to get back into the stage now because the puzzle switch is already hit. Yeah. All right. Keep going with the donations. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> For a while, ah. Send in even more donations. Favorite seasons? Favorite seasons? 
I have $10 from Juske. Greetings from West Norway. Should have hit the cauldron. T-Rex transformation is the best one. I hate Boggy. This run has been amazing. Whoa! Hey! I have $10 from Ash. Been watching since GDQ was still streamed from the original couch and can finally donate. Good luck to all the runners. We have $5 from JJ Wildheart. SGDQ hype! We have $10 from Duff Maru. Greetings from Chile. Wish you the best of luck, smiley face. We have $25 from Squidly. It's 3 a.m. It is now the witching hour. It's also real gamer hours. Who's up? We have $100 from Sluggo and Mars. Thank you, doctors, for all that you do. And uh, thank you, GDQ, for utilizing gaming in such a noble way. Special shout out to the three cool dudes in the audience, Ty, Jeff, and Jonesy. Looking good. Woo! All right. So what I actually have to do, I'll just explain really quickly. I have to go back to Click Clockwood now to turn into the bee. Because as I was about to explain, the, uh, the bee can actually go past the trigger for Mumbo D transforming you and turning you back into Banjo and Kazooie. And then you can take the bee wherever you want, which is really fun. And um, with, by doing that, we can actually go and travel back to Freeze Easy Peak. And like I said, we had to make a second visit. Well, we're going to be going there as the bee and doing everything we have to do as the bee. And along the way, getting all sorts of lair jiggies. So it's a really cool ending. Yeah, and the unfortunate mistake there was opening the note door. Yeah, the note door has to be there to do the clip. Luckily, though, the that game... it's so random that that happened. It's not like anything I would ever even think about normally. And luckily, um, the game only saves if you either save and quit or enter through a loading zone. And since yeah. we did neither of those, we didn't save, so the door will still be there now. Yeah. But the unfortunate thing is, I couldn't just go back to Click Clock Wood. Because I did that sick click clock wood early, earlier. <laughs> and so the door was closed. <laughs> Luckily, we had a million jiggies to save, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. So all I have to do now is turn back into the B, and I can do the note door clip. Be a little more careful this time. Time for a couple more donations while we be it up. Yep. We have $10 from Grogfella. Favorite season? I'm partial to season four of The Simpsons myself. Greetings from Finland. We have $10 from Cotbox. The adventures are the best adventures. Go. Uh -huh. This could be a washing machine. Oh. Uh, that that would have been crazy. <laughs> that would have been nuts. <laughs> I was going to say it was destiny. <laughs> Five dollars from CC, who says, "You what deserves the train of B puns? A B related reset or B set? That was a B set." <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Okay, pretend we're the back last, on track. Yeah, the yeah. last ten minutes. I hope, that was that happen. ten minutes. Oh God, I'm so <laughs> no, sorry. I, I, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, I totally, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. <laughs> so ideally it wasn't supposed to void out there, but it's a minimal time loss because the door is still closed. We just try again. Thank you. We got it. Okay. It's one of those things where like you don't practice it because it's second nature and then, and then it can go horribly wrong. Yeah, but there we go. Yeah. We're on our way. So. This is the reverse B adventure, and the no FFM version is a little different. I promise the wait was worth it. So we go, um, we go around the lair, we collect ev almost every single level's lair jiggy that we've left behind. And since the B isn't supposed to be here, there's a lot of glitchiness that happens. So for instance, I just flew into that wall, and I was able to clip in and get the jiggy there. And now we're gonna head into Freeze Easy Peak and do the second visit. Woo! 
So again, the bee has some quite fast movement. You can just touch the sides of things and clip into them to get items. So there was a jiggy I left in that pipe there the whole time. Lots of wheeze coming up. From yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is where... Ouch! Oh, my God. Rude! Sign the snowman for the military. <laughs> oh we... Yeah, so we left the gingos because it's very easy to... Oh, man. I thought he was going to hit me again. It's very easy to just get, get around this whole stage while flying and go collect all the gingos. Uh, there's one in Mumbo's skull here. And another one right over here. And Jinjo's like the notes reset when you leave the level, so that's why we have to get all five now. When we and I know you guys had so much fun with the Wehei spam. So you gotta do it again because we're racing Boggy again. You're supposed to do this as Banjo and Kazooie, but I'm gonna be doing it as the B. And as you see, you can pass through these checkpoints uh, at any vertical height. Yeah, as long as you're actually like, yeah, at the right like part of the gate. Are so good. Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is way harder than it looks. Actually, controlling the bee to go through all uh, of these slaloms. First try. Easy. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, I really can't afford to lose any more time. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just gonna have to do this first try. Yeah, they're gonna kick us out. If <laughs> yeah. We make any more mistakes? <laughs> no, never fear. We are about to go beat the game. Hooray! Oh well, we're still underestimate, but not for long. <laughs> So we get to have a lot of fun with the bee now. Finished up our second Freeze Easy Peak visit by getting this empty honeycomb. We now officially 100%ed Freeze Easy Peak. Had to come back, did the whole thing as the bee, which I just think is so cool. Yeah. Um, and now we have to continue down through the lair, collecting more lair jiggies, because the bee is very glitchy, and you can do that. Um, and you'll see I'm just going to basically break a whole bunch of rules here. So if I just fly into this wall, I get that jiggy. I don't know. That's the Mad Monster Mansion layer jiggy. And then come over here to the sarcophagus. Fly into that. Oh, there we go. That's the Gobi's Valley layer jiggy. Just jump down here and, you know, there's bars. I don't care. I'll just walk through them. That's the Bubble Gloop Swamp jiggy. Oh, I have to get the click clock wood yeah, one again. Yeah, yeah. Am oh, I gonna yeah, detransform? Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. Cause that one didn't save because we didn't go to the. Oh one. my god. I skip it. I'm gonna skip yeah, it. I don't... <laughs> yeah. I think cause is there any way around that? I don't, I don't know think if there's so. a way around. Okay, whatever. I got the jiggy. You all saw it. <laughs> I just had to reset. Yeah. So that's supposed to be jiggy number ten. So yes, we 100% yeah, of the game. Woo! Totally got all the jiggies. You saw me get it, yeah, okay? He did get he it. Did, I did, he did get, get it. it. He did get it. <laughs> all right, so we're going to head right into Furnace Fun here. And this is where uh, things get pretty interesting again. We've got um, a big time save, a glitch. And do you want to explain how this one got found? It's, it's one of the coolest stories about Banjo-Kazooie speedrunning history, I think, this Furnace Fun skip. Yeah, there have been like quite a few ways to skip Furnace Fun over the years. Uh, we, we used to have to go through like nearly the entire puzzle uh, and and then do a skip at the end. But what Duck is about to do here is only answer a couple of questions and then uh, gain control of Banjo uh, on the the Death Square. Okay. So 
there's going to be a pretty precise spot here that if he is standing in the right spot, uh, you can actually go into Talent Trot uh, between these two squares and then answer the question. Nice, no picture question. If he was to get a picture question there, then the trick actually wouldn't work. It's just one of those things where that's the one thing that you can't get or it won't work. But if he gets any other question and gets it wrong, he stays in Talent Shot. Yeah, and, he and could, you could just... It thinks the game thinks you've died, so you can just run right to the final boss. There's actual, it actually saves over 10 minutes now because if you finish that furnace fun board like the natural way, there's a six minute cutscene that plays of fake credits, like you beat the game. And then it's like, psych, you didn't actually beat the boss yet. So it's like this huge skip. And when it was found, it was really cool because it was found completely by accident, like some of the other tricks in this game too. Mm -hmm. And now to get true 100%, you're going to learn double health, right? <laughs> I, think, I think we should just beat the boss yeah. and get off stage. <laughs> so yeah, grunty fight coming up. There's a lot of little tricks to it. And, uh, and just like precise things you have to do with egg shots and beak bombs and all the things that you've learned up to this point to take down the boss. Uh, might as well rattle off a few donations before we finish up here, because the end is coming in about two and a half minutes. Donations? Absolutely. We have five dollars from bottles. Hey, Banjo, heard you were cheating. Would now be a good time to delete your save? We have a $100 donation from Dave. Didn't know GDQ was running. Great surprise when I woke up this morning. Keep up the good work. We have $5 from Grizzly. Did I just see Breeze Easy Pete? Wahey! We have $100 from Kyle Gordon. Man, I love Banjo-Kazooie. I'm right there with you. We have $50 from Sleepy Kazooie. Took plenty of power naps so I could stay up and see the Banjo-Kazooie run. Also, love seeing so much Kirby rep in the prize blocks, even when he's not being played. All right, got all four beak bombs, so that makes us move on to the next phase, which is the Jinjo statues. There's actually quite a big skip here, which will save me 10 seconds if I get it. Um, if you poop eggs at the exact right time here, then you can activate this Jinjo statue in overlap cutscenes. So I'll give it a shot. We got it. Easy. Nice. Yeah, before the run is over, it's over very soon. Like I said, keep watching speed running, you know. Donate generously, you know. It's a really good cause, and it's a really good time. I'm always having tons of fun at these events, like, and I'm always happy when I get a chance to show, you know, some banjo speed running. It's, it's just a great time. So thanks for having me again. Sorry for going over estimate, you know. It's a, it's a crazy hard game to uh, to get through without something horrible happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, All was, things considered. This was such a clean run until <laughs> the mistake that loses 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it always is. But anyways, yeah, follow our Twitches. Mine is Duck. We have Connor75 and we have Schlongster7 over here. So... You know, we all stream Banjo. Connor streams Donkey Kong 64, which is also a really cool speed run. But here we go. This is the last part of the run. The Gingenator statue. I just have to put five eggs in each of the holes here, and we are finished. And time. GG. Okay. We did it. Yep. It's just a clean 213. <laughs> <laughs> hey, beat my OFM hey. PP. Did it? All right. Well. Yeah, that beat my FFM PP. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I really hope everyone enjoyed, like I said, like, regardless of how the run goes or anything, I just have so much fun. And that was just a really, really great time for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks so much, and enjoy the rest of the marathon. We're just getting started.
Thank you so much, Duck, for that lovely, lovely banjo run. That was incredible, um, amazing, a little breathtaking at the end of there. Um, <laughs> we went straight from uh, how to train a speedrunner to mercy kill, I think. But, uh, you know, <laughs> hotfix. Check out hotfix. <laughs> All righty. We have one last season's donation for y'all. Uh, we have $5 from Tobias G. He says, my favorite season is the one we're in right now. It's nice and warm outside, but the sun doesn't melt your face off yet. We're going to be taking just a short break here for a while, but join us later for even more speedrunning goodness. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2023. Folks, it has been an incredible time tonight, but unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and so must my shift. I've been the King's Pride, and it's been my incredible honor to host for you for the very first time. Worry not, I'll be leaving you in great hands. You know them, you love them, you caught bug snacks with them. It's Conception.
All right, how we doing, SGDQ 2023? My name is Conception, and I'm going to be taking over hosting duties for the next few runs, Dark Summit, Bloody Hell, Loom, and Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I am very, yeah, let's go out there. I am uh, very excited to be taking over. Uh, of course, you know, the donations have been flowing. I can't believe we're already over 2,000 donations total, and the amount of money we have raised for Doctors Without Borders is incredible. Thank you all so much for being super generous. By the way, in case you aren't aware, what is Doctors Without Borders? Well, Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an independent international organization that offers medical humanitarian assistance to people based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. Over the past five decades, MSF has grown from a group of a few hundred volunteers to an international movement, providing over 10 million medical consultations in more than 70 countries every year. MSF's core value of humanitarianism, independence, neutrality, and impartiality continue to drive their work in providing life-saving aid to people whose survival is threatened by violence, neglect, or catastrophe, primarily due to armed conflict, epidemics, malnutrition, exclusion from healthcare, or natural disasters. So just so you know, every dollar we're receiving is going a long, long way, and thank you for those who are able to donate. Also, awesome to see we have plenty of donations still coming through from the late night crew in the US here. Appreciate you all who are sticking around and giving us a watch. Such as $25 from Chops, who says, let's go SGDQ and all my friends in the Blossom Garden. Emberly comes through with $10 saying, SGDQ hype? Long time watcher, first time donating. Much love to the speedrunning community and my wonderful partner, Cassie. Iron Reaper 7 coming through with $500. No comment provided, but thank you so much for that donation. In fact, wanted to take the time to shout out one of my favorite all-time donators, Anonymous coming through with a $10 donation, a $50 donation, a $15 donation. Anonymous just comes through every year. Can't wait to meet them someday. Additionally, we have $50 from Corbio with no comment, but thank you so much for that donation. And also a $250 donation from, you guessed it, Anonymous, thank you so much for everyone who is donating to Doctors Without Borders. We appreciate it. We just had $25 come through from Gamer Angel saying, thank you to everyone at GDQ and Doctors Without Borders for putting on a wonderful show every year. This year has been tough and I was just given difficult medical news. GDQ is perfect to keep me company as I go on my medical journey. Sorry I couldn't be there in person this year. Thank you all, and we love everyone on GDQ staff. We are wishing you the best of luck, Gamer Angel. We've received $100 from GER Repetro saying, looking forward to an interesting week of speedrun content and great commentaries. Thank you for your efforts. Greetings to the German Restream. Yes, special shout out to our Restreams out there uh, showcasing the GDQ love in a variety of languages. We appreciate you, we love you, and keep on rocking. By the way, folks, we have a few challenges in Bid Wars Open that I want to draw your attention to as well. So the first one that's going to be coming up is, uh, is for Loom, which if you haven't seen the Loom speedrun, you're in for a treat. But what I want to highlight is a Bid War going on for Loom between Save the Shepherds and Leave the Shepherds. Currently in the lead, Saving the Shepherds, which I have to guess is slower, with $3,018 versus Leave the Shepherds at $2,200. 
I don't know. I, I, I thought this was a speedrunning convention. Don't we want to see things go faster around here? I thought that was the goal, right? So let's get some more donations in and even the score up on Save versus Leave the Shepherds. Additionally, we do have another incentive open uh, for Peggle Deluxe. Now, the All Pegs final level, currently sitting at $7,664 out of $10,000. So you know what to do. Get those donations in, and let's make that challenge a reality. All right, $10 coming through for Neville underscore X saying, hey everyone, since I found out about GDQ around eight years ago, I have never missed one event. I hope one day to attend personally, but until then, I'll gladly enjoy it from home. Good luck to all the runners, and thank you so much for your donation. We've also received $20 from Azure Mosquito saying, so excited for another great week spent watching GDQ. My partner got me watching a few years ago, and now these events are something we always look forward to. Hashtag trans rights. Render coming through with a feeling I think we can all sympathize and relate to $50 donation here from Render who says, Select a donation, and good luck. Feels good to move that ticker, right? It absolutely does. It absolutely does. Thank you for your donation. Lordly Hour donating $5, saying, Bigfoot sighting at GDQ? Are you sure we weren't seeing a Yeti? Yeah, shout out to the Yeti. Love seeing that love. Also, $100 from Johnny Five Aces saying, shout out to the Speed Friends Discord from your pal, Johnny. $15 comes through from Zant saying, so hyped to have SGDQ back. Aren't we all? Absolutely. Thank you so much for your donation. All right, and without further ado, I hope you're all ready to shred those mountains because we are about to go on a snowboarding journey with Dark Summit by Flatline. Show us how it's done. <laughs> 